These are interesting, if not unexpected, times to own a house or a property. After years of warnings, the Bank of Canada has now increased its central lending rate three times since last summer, bumping rates to their highest level since 2009. That last increase happened just about five weeks ago and was immediately matched by the big banks who increased the borrowing costs associated with things like lines of credit, uh, personal loans, and, of course, variable rate mortgages. Our guest tonight pays very close attention to things like this because it's his job. He is the author of a, a fascinating new book with the uh, provocative title Confessions of a Halifax Mortgage Broker. And we're pleased to welcome Clinton Wilk Wil Wilkins back to the program tonight. Thanks so much Excellent. for coming Excellent. Thanks in. for having Clinton. me, Bruce. So uh, why did you write the book? What were you hoping to accomplish? I wrote the book because I think there's a little bit of a need in the marketplace. Nothing like this has been written before for consumers. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some books out there around mortgage lending, but typically they're written for mortgage lenders like mortgage brokers or banks. Uh, but there's never been a book written for consumers. And, you know, I've been in the industry about 12 years and I've funded over 1,800 mortgages. So I've seen a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And people always ask me for my perspective and my advice. And I thought, you know, what can I do that's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge and give back a little bit to the community? And I thought, you know, writing a book could be an interesting thing. And I think that, you know, giving my perspective has some value as well. And, and it does, a very personal book filled with mm -hmm. your own, uh, your life uh, experiences, your experiences as, as a broker. You grew up in the Annapolis Valley. You were just 19 years old when you brought your, uh, bought your first house with your partner at the time. Did you buy or did you build? We built a new construction house in Dartmouth. And, you know, at the time, I can't even believe that we really did it. It was a different time back then. Mm -hmm. I think if you had a heartbeat, you could almost get a mortgage. And now, as we know, there's been a series of changes over the last period of time, making it more challenging right. for consumers to buy. Um, back, back, back then, 17 years ago, you know, it was obviously a little bit of a different time. We built a new construction house in Dartmouth. And obviously, back then, the values were a lot lower as well. And it's, a, it's definitely interesting. And over the next five years, you and your partner purchased 18 rental units, mm -hmm. starting in, in St. John. Yeah, that's right. That's it's, astonishing. It, it was really an interesting story. Uh, and again, the values of the properties in St. John, New Brunswick were quite low, but the ability to you know, originate mortgages was also, uh, it was different. It was a lot easier to get a mortgage and you needed a smaller amount as a down payment, specifically mm -hmm. for a rental property. Now, of course, it's a little bit more rigorous. Not that we're not lending every day, but obviously, you know, a lot's changed over the period of time. And life happens and it happened to you. Mm -hmm. You and your partner broke up. You found yourself with a lot of debt. Did I read this right? You had $900,000 in unsecured debt. Yeah, can you imagine? You know, Close obviously, to a million dollars yeah. in unsecured debt. And at that time, you know, I didn't think that there was any options. You know, obviously the income had changed in the household. Yeah. Um, so obviously we had to make some hard decisions on, you know, which way to move forward. Right. Um, but I think that happens to a lot of consumers. And, you know, there could be breakdown in business, but there can also be breakdown in, you know, marriage, health. There's a lot of reasons mm -hmm. why things go wrong. Sure. And I think that, you know, reading a book like this can give people a little bit of perspective. What did you learn from that experience? Because you, you wound up declaring bankruptcy. Yeah, I did. And yeah. I think that, you know, it's a really humbling experience. Mm -hmm. For me, I think that, you know, everyone deserves a second chance. But don't make the same mistakes twice. I think that's really an important story to remember. And, you know, I think that there's two types of consumers. You know, some consumers that learn and they, you know, make the changes and then they come out the other end much stronger and healthier than they were before. Mm -hmm. But then there's some consumers that never learn. And, you know, we see them in our office as well. We see the bo both sides of, the, both sides of the, the ticket, really. Can someone who's declared bankruptcy ever mm -hmm. own a home? Is your credit damaged forever or can you overcome that? Technically, depending on what your down payment and, and what the situation is, you can buy a house one day out of bankruptcy. One day Obviously, out. the rates are going to be a lot higher and you're going to have to have more skin in the game. Mm -hmm. um, you technically have to go to an alternative lender if you're going to purchase a house or get a mortgage directly outside of bankruptcy. But the A lenders will actually look at someone who's been discharged from bankruptcy for two years. So if you have two years discharged, two years of new reestablished credit and two new trade lines, maybe of $2,000 you know, minimum each, mm. then you could qualify through an A lender to buy a house maybe with as little as 5% down. If it's available, would it make sense for somebody who's got a lot of unsecured debt to try to refinance that debt? and get it into the mortgage. I'm mm -hmm. talking about somebody who, 
you know, hasn't had to declare bankruptcy, but still has a lot of bills. Yeah, if you have a lot of bills and you have some equity in your home, it's definitely worth talking to a mortgage professional. Mm -hmm. I think getting the unbiased advice is very, very important these days. There's a lot of noise in the media. Um, consumers can refinance their home up to 80% of the market value of that home and secure a new mortgage. So that would be 80% of the market value. So for example, if a house is worth 200,000, they could do a new mortgage up to $160,000. Which could eat up a lot of that Yeah, debt. that could eat up a lot of the debt. So of course, they'd have to pay off their first mortgage and any secured lines of credit or loans that are secured against the house. Right. And then whatever equity is available could pay out any unsecured debt over and above that. And a lot of times people refinance to improve the property or invest. So there's a lot of different reasons why people do a refinance. Well, let's talk about the, re mm -hmm. you mentioned people refinancing to improve of the property. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? I think, you know, it's certainly, if they're going to refinance and put uh, something into the property that's going to increase the value, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think a lot of consumers, you know, sometimes will sit on the real estate and they're not sure, does a new kitchen make sense or new flooring or new windows? Mm. Those are hot topic items and I think that when people improve their property with things like that, it really does make a difference. I think things sometimes like pools, um, maybe not so great. Sometimes that can actually detract from the property value and those are very costly things to put in. So I think right. it, you need to really weigh the pros and cons when you do a renovation. Are you going to get back dollar for dollar what you put in? And is it going to be willing, you know, are you willing to take that risk to improve the property? Are you going to see the payout in the end? You also have a warning in the book for house flippers, which is a popular category mm -hmm. of television show. I don't have to tell you that. Yeah. What do you mean when you say we have a balanced market here? I think that we've never really had a boom. And I think that is good in Halifax. You know, we have a very steady market. We've seen one, two, three percent increases in the property values over the last period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't seen the increases that they've seen in Ontario or Alberta or Vancouver, but we don't have the volatility either. We're very steady, which is great. So we're seeing small increases, but it's stable. Does that mean that uh, somebody can't make a lot of money flipping homes around here? And I'm not saying that they can't make the money, but I think that they need to be cautious because I think that the consumers here are doing their due diligence more than they ever have before. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of resources out there from realtors and websites figuring out, you know, what did, was the house sold for in the beginning? How much did someone put into the house? What are they trying to sell it for again? So I think that people are cognizant of hey, am I going to be able to get the best deal? And everyone wants to make money. Everybody along the process wants to make money. So if the flipper wants to make money, you know, at the end of the day, the consumer that wants to buy it wants to make money too down the road. So I think that there's a balance between buying the house, improving it, and that profit margin. What is the biggest misconception that first-time home buyers have? What's the biggest mistake they, they think? I think the biggest the mistake that first time home buyers make, I think sometimes they, uh, you know, they think with their heart versus thinking with their, their, you know, their wallet or their, their, their minds. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that buying real estate is a business transaction. And I think that when you take the emotion out of it, you're definitely going to have more bang for your buck over the long run. I think that sometimes people, uh, you know, they, they fall in love with the house versus falling in love with the business transaction. Cause at the end of the day, the numbers need to make sense. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to service the debt and you need to be able to live comfortably and I think sometimes consumers buy right to the maximum of what they can afford but you need to you know really look at your monthly budget you know it, it, whatever you can get approved for you really need to think about what do you want to pay on a monthly basis as well don't need to tell you there's been an mm -hmm. explosion in the condo market particularly in Halifax over the last few years any tips or warnings for buyers of those uh, properties you know, I think that condos are great for a lot of people because they know what they're going to pay. You know, there's downsides around condos as well. You know, if something does go wrong, guess what? The condo owners are going to have to pay the money to fix the property. Mm -hmm. So we've seen condo buildings that they've had to have a special assessment on, and we've seen condo fees increase over the period of time. So right. I think that that's something to be cognizant of. You know, for a consumer that doesn't want to shovel or fix the roof, I think condos are great. Mm -hmm. They're not for everyone, so I think they, they really, people need to weigh the pros and cons, whether is a condo the right decision or a freehold property is the right decision. I mentioned rates a few minutes ago, fixed or variable. What are you recommending for clients? We're still recommending variable. You are? Yeah, and we've seen increases in the Bank of Canada, which everyone knows, but we've seen increases in the fixed rates as well. Mm -hmm. And I think my, my adage from the summer is still the same as it is now. I think people need to make the decision that's right for their host household and really look at their entire financial uh, you know, future and their, hot, and their entire financial outlook. Mm -hmm. I think that people need to look at um, you know, getting the advice from an unbiased professional. 
You know, in a fixed rate, it's great because it's fixed for a certain period of time, but we need to remember that that fixed rate is going to come up for renewal. We're seeing people renewing now into much higher rates than they've had the last five years. And that takes a lot of getting used to. It obviously. takes a lot of getting used to because we are at historically low rates, mm. and now as the rates increase, people are seeing renewals much, much higher than they are now, so they're seeing a little bit of payment shock. The reason we really like the variable rate is it almost gets consumers ready for the increase. You know, seeing a few small increases over time is more manageable. And over the last 25 years, people have historically done better in a variable rate than they have in a fixed. A lot to think about. Thank Thanks for joining us, Clinton. Thank you, Frank. Really Thanks for having appreciate me. It. I appreciate it. Clinton Wilkins, a veteran mortgage broker, the author of a new book, Confessions of a Halifax Mortgage Broker. Lots of good inside information told in a, a very plain spoken way. You can find it on Amazon.com. Uh, some bookstores and at Clinton's office as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>